Chamber? Present. Mr. Crockett? Here. Mr. Maroon? Mr. Loisel? Here. And Ms. Torres?
Uh, she had the ability to go up to the six or eight people, six, and then she had six clients, six infants, and she had indicated that if she does go up to six, she would potentially hire someone else, but um, the discussion around her not able, wanting to stay at four, four infants rather than going to six, she probably would not want to hire a second person. All I'm saying is whatever she decides, it would be nice to not on her. Um, what did we simply add uh, at this time at the end of that sentence? Because the standards in the ordinance will allow her to have one person before the outside. Is that that makes no sense? Not sure what I need to do here, but uh, we're looking to have our tech extended around a week 
bought the house 12 years ago. Um, we had some nice views to the ocean, and some of those views were taken away from us because uh, the house was built um, alongside us. Uh, I'm not sure the exact address, but in fact, I, I believe that the owner of that house sent an email to Brian acknowledging that they did not have any problems with this request. And uh, so we're just trying to extend our views out to the front of the house. I would agree. It's frustrating for us to come to I think we're good on that. Oh, 
construction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Um, well, in the packet, there are several other
No, no, no. Yeah. Two of them. Then for the so I better be comfort myself. and the enjoyment of the area, it's a beautiful area. We survive uh, high end homes in that area, and we're just trying to maintain the quality of our enjoyment of our location. When I look at question number three, I don't really see it applying to us and why you want the expansion. I see that you want the deck on. You can't put a deck on the other side of the house because there's already a deck on that side of the house. There's only really one side of the house right there that allows you to have the deck that you're looking to put in. Uh, I would agree with this shoot. Um, I would also, um, getting back to Mrs. Loisel's earlier point where character really isn't a, a, a requiring factor for this application, but having a wraparound fences on other houses in the area nearby does, uh, for me, show that other houses are also enjoying this in the same way. Um, and again, due to the features of the slot and the features of the house, the fact that here he has a deck on one side, he wants it on another side to make it a wraparound, I don't see the that. I would probably have to agree with Mr. Moldau that we never really look at it solely just on the view, and that's basically what we're saying. We're looking at it just on the view, like if there was a necessity to have it there, or we needed it for something particular to the home for usage of it. That might be something that was a little bit easier to say yes to, but just the view, I think we've come back on other ones in the past where we've said no just based upon solely just the view. And, and what would be other requirements or aspects of, of getting your approval if, in fact, it was other than you? I mean, you don't, in order to kind of utilize the house, you don't really need to have the view. So, I mean, it's an item you'd like to have so that you can get the view that you'd like. But it's not really something that we, we can really say you need it. It's something that you definitely need to have in order to utilize the home able to have it all like any person down that board. And like, so if in fact uh, we went and measured some of the other decks that were wrapped around the front of the building to the street and they were out of code and there weren't any any uh, variances allowed by that, uh, what would that uh, what would be the position of the of the committee of the board? We wouldn't really have a position on that, I don't believe. Maybe it was long staff, you can elaborate on that. He's asking what if we went to measure other homes and they were out of conformance or not in code, what would be our position on it? Right. So that, it wouldn't have, like I said, it wouldn't have anything to do with No bearing in this case, right? Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to confirm it. It basically wouldn't have. Something may have happened, it may have been before zoning or whatever. I don't know what it would be. We have to look at each case on its own merits. So, based upon that, on three, um, all in favor? Three. Opposed? Two. Four, the impacts and effects. Excuse me, and what does that mean? For the vote three and two. You have a three to two pass. Okay, so that's a, that passes then. Um, question three passes. Yes, okay, thank yes, you. Yes, we would vote on the whole. Yeah. No, I understand. I just wasn't sure about Yeah, the, if we go through each one individually, and then we'd have to vote on the actual yeah. entire appeal. I suspected that, but I wanted to know. Yeah. The, the impacts and effects of the, of the enlargement <coughs> expansion of new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of the building or structure which conforms to the yard. I think uh, I think what he's trying to do here uh, meets that requirements. He's putting on a deck. Other homes have the same deck. You see pictures of it. I'm satisfied. Yeah, I don't think there's a significant change to uh, from this property to any other surrounding properties. 
No, you agree with the board. I mean, you've provided photos showing that the other properties already have these similar ducts. I agree with the shoot um, and uh, Mr. Lizzo that other buildings and structures are similar in your neighborhood, so what you're proposing isn't, isn't out of place with the surrounding properties. I would agree. I think based upon what you provided us with, it, it appears that it would be, the effects wouldn't be any different than any of the other structures down that you, you've given us information on, and I think it would conform to the access like the existing in the packet. All in favor of four? Unanimous. Any other questions or comments from the board? Oh. Excuse me. Applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considered an after the fact application. We need to do this one. You haven't no, I haven't responded to that. No construction has <coughs> commenced on the structure. We're just waiting for the, the pending approval to start construction of the Thank you. No problem. Do you have any comment down the road? Yeah. Seeing that there's no comments from anybody, it appears that you meet the needs as far as everybody's concerned. And all in favor of that, amen. Unanimous. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? The board will be there for public. I did. There was no one here. So, all in favor of appeal, motion, action. Motion to. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve appeal number 2632. Okay. All in favor as presented. <coughs> Three. Opposed? Two. Yes. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, you had mentioned something at the beginning of the meeting that this does not, this goes through another process. Uh, You're all set as a Tonight. Okay, so I can go wait tomorrow to the town hall and get a board building permit. Is that no? No. <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be a written notice to the applicant um, stating board's findings. That's by law. That has to go to them. Karen will provide that just as soon as she extracts all this information and puts it into a letter. Not, not the decision, but just the it, it may not happen tomorrow. It'll, we have seven days. <laughs> okay. In seven days. But the decision will stand as of tonight. The decision was made tonight. The letter, the written letter to the applicant stating the, the, the results of this decision won't occur so within seven days, and it's usually two or three days. This written decision is simply for the record that it has the findings of fact and the conclusions of law, of which we didn't really do a lot of. And that's what I'm trying to extract bits and pieces of, and we'll have that discussion later. But that's one of the reasons is that nobody goes down and lists findings of fact. We talk about a lot of stuff, and some of that stuff is pertinent and some of it isn't, but it's all part of the record because it's on the tape. And I extract out of that the factual stuff to find the findings of fact, and I extract out of your comments the conclusions of law and bring them back to you for approval. So I'm not putting words in anybody's mouth. I'm simply trying to organize the thought process so that if a court looks at this, they can make sense out of it. So that, that's why, but, but that doesn't have any bearing on your decision to make. You, you voted to approve this. That's the decision. Yeah, but he'll get, he has two things he needs to do. He'll get a, a certificate of variance approval, which he needs to record within 90 days. If he does not do that, the variance becomes void. He'll want it as soon as he gets that certificate march right down to the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds and record that because he also wants to have a building permit and you can't issue that until, until that uh, variance is recorded. So there's a couple of pieces of paper he needs to get. This is not one of them. What we're doing here, the findings of fact and conclusions of the law are part of the record and he can certainly have a copy of that if he wants. But he's going to receive a letter 
stating that his variance was approved and he's going to receive the uh, notarizable certificate of variance approval. That's what is recorded at the registry. So those are the two important pieces for the applicant. I guess his question was, how soon can he... You can submit your building permit application as soon as you want. We won't approve it until we get a recording of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for your consideration. Appeal number 2622, variance request by Anthony Diamico, 93 Sterling Road, Assessor's Map R100, Parcel 1. Mr. Longstaff, can you introduce this as well as the comments? So this is one that was uh, came before us but was tabled uh, a couple of months ago. Um, the um, applicant is applying for a standard hardship variance um, to install a deck, construct a deck on the um, side of his house uh, closer to the resource. Um, he's basically, his property butts up against the wetland that's associated with the, the marsh, um, uh, the river down on Spurwick Road. Um, from the upland edge of the wet wetland, there is a seven-year required 75-foot setback. The property, as you look through your, your application package, you'll see the, the uh, plan provided by Northeast Civil Solutions clearly shows a 75-foot wetland setback. The house is entirely within that, that 75 feet. This, um, so because it's in the shoreland zone, the only uh, available relief is through the standard hardship variance and as you know the four criteria need to show that there's no reasonable return on this property but for the issuance of the variance. Um, the, um, as I stated in my variance uh, notes, um, uh, section 12C1 of our shoreland zoning ordinance chapter 405C states that no structure which is less than the required setback from Normal high water line, a water body, tributary stream, or the upland edge of a shall be expanded toward the water body, tributary stream, or wetland. Um, we'll let the applicant uh, state their case, and then um, during public comment, I'll want to make mention of a couple of letters that, that we have from um, state departments. Okay. So, this is one that got to send up? Yes. yes, required by our ordinance, the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance, any variance requests are forwarded to the Department of Environmental Protection, uh, Shoreland uh, Zoning Coordinator Mike Morse, and uh, that's the requirement in our ordinance. I have to do that for every variance that happens in the Shoreland Zone. Would you please state your name and who you represent, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Fisher with Northeast Sub Solutions here this evening, representing Mr. and Mrs. Domingo. That's where I surmised what they're looking at is, uh, yeah, they have a technical sound Stated, uh, what we have here is a property on its Road right near the entrance to uh, Higgins Beach in Ocean Avenue. Uh, this is a property that uh, has been, was created, or the property was created many, many decades ago. The house was actually built in 1969. Uh, if you'll take a look at the, or if you would take a look at the photographs in your packet, you get a chance, you'll see that the uh, one is a uh, photograph that shows uh, a great deal, a uh, great number of the properties that were. This particular locus and the properties that are on either side of it, that just puts it into a spatial perspective of what this property actually looks like relative to the other properties, uh, and some of which were actually built before this, it's not part of the subdivision, uh, and several of which were constructed afterwards. Essentially, what happened is, is way of quick background is this property has been uh, purchased and sold several times uh, since it was created. Uh, one of the latter owners, actually, without a permit, built a deck across the back, and I don't know how long it was there, but the codes officer at the time, this was quite a while ago, uh, discovered it through whatever means, and looked through the uh, codes file, and saw the permits, and said, you have to get a permit for that. The owner allegedly, this is a story that was told to us by Mr. Amico, uh, the owner then allegedly said, okay, I'll file a permit. And the codes officer said, well, not so fast. Uh, and so they submit a permit, but it's really not going to be much good because unless you want to go to something where it appeals, which you've been doing, uh, I can't just grant you a permit for a deck. You're going to have to take down the deck or go to something where it appeals, which that individual did. Uh, and that individual was a builder and uh, built the deck quite well, but 
considerable vertical structures. Some of them are actually separate structures. You see in the photographs there are some outlying structure sheds. There's an outdoor kitchen on one of them. Uh, there's a driveway, there's a pool, an in-ground pool, etc. Many of which are considerably closer to the resource than what this part of this property would actually have, even when the deck is there. Now another issue I brought up with uh, Mike, just saying, you know, how do we play this? Um, there is a the septic system uh, for this site is behind the structure as well. In fact, when you take a look at the photographs, you'll see a slight uh, mounded area. Uh, that is the septic. A septic, like an in-ground pool, is not really a structure per se in terms of a house or a shed or a detached garage or whatever you might see. However, it is still a structure that is, in this case, between the house and between where the deck would go on the house and the actual resource. Does that have any specific bearing on the deck? As a deck, no. But it does as far as improvements of the property is concerned. We are not pushing a precedent to try to go extremely close to the upland edge of the wetlands. And this is all upland area, but the wetlands are close. Uh, the point being is that there is a septic system, a uh, relatively new one, a relatively recent one, that is considerably closer. Uh, that's the one that you see on the photograph. I asked Mike about that, and he said, well, you know, we understand that everybody has to have a septic or anybody who's not a public sewer, obviously, uh, and it's got to go somewhere. That's the kind of thing where he says, I can't deal with the past. I mean, that's really why there is a zoning board of appeals to determine whether or not um, that is part of the reason to be able to grant a deck that's not going to go anywhere close to the septic system or closer to the septic system, and it's certainly not going to go closer to the resource that where the septic system already is. Another issue with this that the amigos brought up is, as you can see from the photographs, there is a uh, about a 10 to 11 foot uh, strip of gravel that is across the back. Uh, it was underneath the deck, it's still there. Gravel's not a big deal, but from the, uh, as far as permitting is concerned, but from the DEP's perspective, it is considered uh, generally an impervious surface area. Now, water can still go through gravel to be sure, but it's not earthen material. The point being here is that from the DEP's perspective, from which we already have the permit, they took a look at this and said, this is not an issue as far as the DEP is concerned. So our contention is, if there is a, a structure in the septic system that's already closer, and there is a quite a wide strip of gravel, it's not just in the back, by the way, it goes around the house, although it's wider in the back, uh, that's already there and considered a pretty surface area, and the DEP has already taken a look at it and said, that is not an issue with us. That gave us food for thought to be able to say, let's go back to the board. Was with Mike's, with Mike Morris's initial letter and Brian's feedback from a month ago, or here two months and a half ago, uh, we tabled this discussion because I needed to talk to some of these people, Brian included. Uh, and just to say, I don't want to waste anybody's time, but is there an argument here based on what they would like to have, what they feel they need to have from a safety perspective because of these sliders in the back? Uh, they have young children, it doesn't matter how sweet go to anybody. But a slider is an open door to wherever, and now they've got a four foot drop. And what they've done is they literally took slats of lumber, and as you can see in the photograph, and they nailed it up against them so that nobody, I don't even children, don't open the sliders and off they go. So we would literally like to be able to just put a deck on the back where it had been, but was put illegally, with the deck plate already in place, with the solitudes already in place, with the underlayment already in place, and with the DEP permit. Respectfully ask that uh, we be able to have a favorable consideration for the deck in this particular area. Uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions or address any comments that you may have.
what it looked like 10 or 15 years before the sure. resident moved in and, and where we are today. Yes. Um, as we understand it, because the deck was the back deck was not permitted, so there was no specific date uh, as far as an application is concerned. Uh, but there is photographic evidence. It actually was uh, about 12 feet wide by the length of the house, which is the previous deck. Uh, it connected to the side deck, which is so there's more landing that's there right now, but that's not the issue. Uh, that was permitted prior. And uh, well, I guess that's about the extent it's 12 feet wide to the house wrapped right connected to the side little porch deck that's there. And, uh, it was built uh, by the previous owner. Again, the house was constructed originally in 69. There were uh, two subsequent owners before the gentleman who actually built the, uh, the, uh, built the deck on it. And then in uh, 2010 is when uh, the Domingos actually purchased the property and learned that the lesson of due diligence. Were your clients represented when they bought the house? Did they have a broker? Was there a broker listed in the house? I would imagine there was a broker listed in the house, yes. Uh, my question, um, and I may have missed this, but, missed this, but pardon me, uh, how deep was the previous deck? You said 12 feet? It was twice extended 12 feet out from the house. The request for this deck was 10 feet. 10 feet. And uh, was the current depth approximately of the uh, gravel? There now. That was completely under the deck. And there's, you, know, you can see also from the photographs, it undulates slightly because it's been there for about uh, 20 years, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, that also went out to the extent of the previous deck, which is 12 feet. And that would be, uh, pursuant to the question, that's a longer answer, is uh, one of the things that the Amigos have said they would do, take it for what it's worth or as a conditional potential approval, uh, is that uh, they would uh, get rid of the, the gravel area. This is not strip of gravel that a lot of people have running right against their foundation to you know, prevent uh, backwash from rain. Uh, it's fairly wide all the way around the house. Uh, they, would, they would get rid of it. Honestly, they would probably end up getting rid of it anyway. Uh, but it's there, and they said, if we can do this, we'll absolutely revegetate all other areas of the property uh, that were somewhat done in the extreme when that deck was created. My last question. Um, you infer that the DEP uh, inter interprets this as an impervious service? All gravel services typically are considered an improvement on the property, and toward that end, they consider it an impervious service. They readily acknowledge, as does everybody, that gravel is permeable, but rather than natural earth, anything other than natural earth is basically considered impervious, even portions of uh, flagstone papers, for instance. Sure. Great, thank you. I'll, I'll try to save my questions. I, I want to do this first. So basically, we normally do. You went over it a little bit, but I just want to go through the questions quickly so you can sort of have some real basic answers to those. And landing question: Can I appeal the reasonable return unless the variance is granted? Just a brief. Yes. Normally, I'd say that's correct and end it and leave it there. Um, in this particular case, notwithstanding what we've already written here. The application. Reasonable return again is somewhat subjective in this case. Uh, reasonable can mean a lot of different things. Normally, if this house had, uh, if somebody just wanted to put a deck on the back, uh, I wouldn't be here this evening uh, because the house would have typical windows as most of our houses have looking out the back of the marsh or whatever, and call it good. In this particular case, they purchased the house, their problem, um, believing that the deck, that what had been there, could be reinstated quite simply, actually getting a permit this time. Um, so it's it become the, the term reasonable becomes a challenge because their purchase of that house was in part predicated on them being able to get the back deck because of the sliding doors that were already there. If they hadn't put the doors there, or if the doors hadn't been there, then if they just wanted the deck, I would say, no, sorry, that just doesn't work too well. Uh, within my purview to be able to tell the client that. In this particular case, when you've got these sliders, when you've got the solitudes in place, everything that we mentioned prior, uh, it seems reasonable to assume that a reasonable return, and at some point they're going to divest themselves of this property, as we always do, uh, 
they're going to go to somebody and say, hey, here's my house, and a lot of people are going to say, yeah, this, this absolutely advocates the deck off the back. It's not just a door without steps. It's three sliding doors that go nowhere. So toward that end, does it have a reasonable return? If somebody has a return, I would argue it's not reasonable. Need to the variances due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. That's uh, absolutely correct. Um, toward that end, uh, the answer in the uh, in the packet: the existing dwelling is not conforming with a 50-foot front yard setback uh, in the RF zone, and then a 75-foot resource setback, which basically means the property as it is today has absolutely no building envelope. Um, so, in actuality, with no building envelope. The existing within which the existing structure could fit without a variance, the proposed construction would reduce nonconformity to both the resource setback uh, by pulling the existing deck and uh, the reduction of the impervious surface on the site uh, from uh, 33.4 to 30.6. This is the uh, uh, actual unique circumstance of the property. Zoning overtook this property, and not just this one, most of them in that area, to the extent that there is no envelope. They can't do anything without a zoning board of appeals of anything construction. This up. So, um, just because there is no envelope, so toward that end, it is absolutely due to the unique circumstances of the property itself. Granted, right, but the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. Uh, in fact, I would call your attention to the photos again, if you wouldn't mind. You take a look at some of the surrounding properties. This house is the, um, the least sizable, and that, that which has uh, very little addition other than the exit specific house itself. Every other house that's along that uh, road that's within your aerial photograph, again, has a, what's almost a compound. It's beautiful. It's huge. Uh, and it has a lot of additional uh, pertinent structures to it. Uh, every one of them. And, by the way, this house is actually set back or swept toward the road, closer to the road than any of the other structures that are there. So all of the other structures that were built there are at least, if not more, close to the actual uh, edge of the uh, of the wetlands than this one is. Um, so as far as essential character of the neighborhood, adding a deck onto this house would actually substantially improve the character of the neighborhood, albeit with the caveat that these, all of these houses, um, the vast majority of these houses have a uh, landscaping that really prevents anybody from, from one house kind of seeing what's going on in the other house. But when you take it all in kind, uh, the value of the properties in that particular area, this would be the least expensive one. So the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially improved if this granted, if this variance is granted. The hardship is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. It's uh, purely due to uh, the house's construction of 69. It's due to zoning, the enactment of zoning. But at that point, it kind of was a prior owner that, that did something illegally that they weren't supposed to. Uh, and that was rectified. They took it down, which is again why we're here tonight, because we want to do it properly. Uh, and we realize it's a challenge. But when we take a look at the circumstances around the property, relative to the other properties that are there, character of neighborhood, is it going to actually impugn on the wetlands? Is it going to cause any uh, problems as far as uh, earthwork, which is typically what the stipulation for 75 feet is all about, and that's not going 25 feet is even more about. The answer is no, because we've already got some construction that's between Post deck and flush. Thank you. We keep you up there um, while Mr. Longstaff gives us some letters, and then I'll save my questions. Okay. 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 okay, just a few things. Um, to the point of the, the DDP permit that uh, Mr. Fisher referred to that they already have in hand, I have a letter from Bonnie Arbo who issued that permit, um, and she explains how the Permit by rule works um, in that the application uh, description of the project said reconstruction of a deck pursuant to section 2 of chapter 305. She explains some things, but in the last paragraph is, is the, the permit one. She says, I would also like to direct your attention to section 1E1 uh, of chapter 305, in which the rule states a violation occurs when an activity occurs that is not allowed under permit by rule whether or not a permit by rule notification form has been filed with or and or approved by the DEP. While you did file a permit by rule notification form and it was accepted and approved by the DEP, 
since the permit by rules under Section 2 are not applicable to activities that do not conform to the local shoreline zoning ordinance, any activity in violation of local shoreline zoning ordinances may be considered violations of law under Chapter 304, 305. Therefore, in no way is a PBR evidence that a planning board should grant a variance. That's from RDR who issued the permit by rule. Mike Morse, um, the shoreline coordinator for the state, also wrote a letter in response, which I had in front of me a minute ago. Magically disappeared. Yes. Morris's comments are that um, basically he reiterates um, that you know, the undue hardship test is four parts um, uh, that um, this, this construction, this project happened long after the shoreline zoning ordinance was in place um, that um, the applicant states when first that the previous deck was part of the original design of the house when constructed in 1969, and it was not, um, obviously was not part of the house. The, the, uh, sliding, the three sliding class doors were added as part of the unpermitted activity that happened sometime in the late 90s or early 2000. Um, as far as the existing dwelling not yielding a reasonable return without the deck, um, the proper consideration of the application of a reasonable return prong of the undue hardship test is unfounded. Without a debt, the dwelling can, unit can still continue to be used, and Mr. Fisher alluded to this. It still can be used as a dwelling unit, and that is a reasonable return. Um, he contends it would be no closer to the coastal wetland than the existing structure by reasoning that the septic system is closer to the shoreline zone. The septic system is not a structure. It's covered by vegetation. Um, the whole part of the shoreline zoning, the whole uh, reason for shoreline zoning is to continue to maintain a vegetated buffer between the resource and the development. And the septic system uh, is a subsurface structure with treated water that's first pre-treated in a septic tank and then flows to the disposal beds or whatever type of uh, uh, construction that is made of, and then it's dissipated into the soil. It does not flow over ground. It's not a structure. It has no bearing on the deck being anywhere near as close to or as in the rules allow the placement systems to be placed within that distance to the shoreline zone. So it's perfectly legal to have the septic system. That's a perfectly legal installation. The deck was not. Um, talked about the permit by rule. Um, they mentioned in several places, the applicant mentions that without the deck there's a safety issue um, with the structure largely because of the doors. Well, the, the simple solution to that is to simply remove the doors and replace them with the windows that were there originally. All of that work was done without a permit in violation. And finally, or not finally, but the next point is with regard to the gravel surface underneath the proposed deck, that was also illegally placed there. I mean, you, you're not allowed to keep that anyway. Surprisingly, the code office never made them remove that and revegetate that because that was a violation as well. So you can't really use that as a reason for putting the deck over the top of it. It shouldn't be there. It's illegal. Um, The other thing I wanted to mention is, I pulled from the file, uh, June 9, 2005, subject appeal number 2253, 93 Spurwick Road. Dear Mr. Howard, this was the owner at the time, by vote of the Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals on June 8, 2005, your appeal against the code enforcement officer's decision has been denied. The board determined that the code officer had not erred in determining that the construction of the decks in the chimney Required setbacks in the RS zone and the shoreline zone. According to the Scarborough Zone Ordinance, Section 5C4, an appeal of the same nature may not be brought before the board within one year. 
they already denied this appeal back in 2005. The situation has not changed. The rules have not changed. The same rules are in play today as they were in 2005. I'll go back down. We'll stop this place. Um, just look at that. I, I have a lot of problems. There, the, like Mr. Hawks, I've said, put the windows back. But not only that, being insurance, I've I've seen people that actually buy devices. You don't need to put a block in there. You can buy a device to make the sliding glass door unusable, so it actually locks it without that device. So I've, I've actually seen people that have done it on houses I've run out because I've questioned it. And I've gone back to underwriters and said, "This is a door that's going down to the ground. <laughs> What's your take on it?" This is entirely from an insurance perspective. They said as long as they have it with that locking device in it, it was fine. Because I would have probably just told them we couldn't insure it for them, but the other end allowed it to be based upon that. Now, um, as far as entryways, are there two points of egress of this house other than the sliding glass door? Yes, there's a front door and a side door. Okay. I'll bring it down, Mr. Blake, and we can go down through with the questions. I agree with uh, most of what was just stated. Uh, I think I struggle with questions one, three, and four. Uh, excuse me, one, two, and four. And uh, I think your argument, argument around uh, reasonable return holds no water as far as I'm concerned. I apologize for saying that as open and honestly as I am, but uh, I read this and I said no way. And again, they purchased this home because they thought it had value. And I'm sure they wanted to have a deck, but I'm sure the value of this home was not based around putting a deck on it. And so if you're saying it's an unreasonable return, I don't believe that it's a 30 or 40% hit on the value of that home by not having a deck. And that's the kind of impact for reasonable return that I would say you would have to have. So by changing those sliders out to blazing, I, I empathize with their safety issue, I get that. Having had small children, uh, I would be weary of having sliders myself. I think I would have changed it out to blazing already to keep them from going out that way. Now, that was their choice. They, they put slats up, which works, and that's fine. But I think that itself says there was a problem going in, and they knew it. Now, they maybe were not in a financial position to find it out because they weren't ready to put the deck on for whatever reason. And then they found it out when they were ready to do that. So I apologize for them, but I'm, I'm voting no on one. Uh, on two, I have the same kind of an argument. Your point is that uh, the circumstances of this property are very unique. And I'm saying if you look at multiple homes to either side of it, it's not unique. They share the same problem. The way the wording of that question is, it says the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property. And the criteria applies to the property, not people. And it's it's an uncommon condition, not shared with other neighbors. No way. Look at the other neighbors. They're, you're all landlocked in small areas where you don't have large building lots. So everybody's going back for a variance to do anything on those properties. So I can't, with a straight face, answer that question that, yes, this person has a unique problem. Because they all have that same problem. It's unique to shorefront property just like this. And then item number four, uh, hardship is not a result of the action of this applicant. I hate to say it was. Because they bought something that was non-conforming, yet it was an illegal installation. It was taken down. And now they have no more right to put that back in because it's still illegal. And I don't think the ordinance changed from when it was removed until now. So. They have no legal right to put this in, so again, I have to vote no on that as well. So because of those three, I have to vote no on this. Mr. Loisel did a good job summarizing kind of what I've been thinking, and Mr. Crockett as well, regarding insurance and safety. As the past two little kids, I've never allowed that to last this long. I struggle with number four the hardest. Again, um, I was only a realtor for a long time. This is maybe our new member of the and comment, but you know, I mean, he went and purchased a house and never even. Um, you know, any real, any realtor 
know that they have to disclose that this debt cannot go here. Um, so it's discouraging to hear them kind of say, oh, well, I didn't know. I mean, that's a very big purchase for someone. And to say, you know, to not even inquire as to why there are doors from the back with no deck um, and not to the court. You know, I think this is actually along with the owner, the prior owner who put those doors in and left them there. I'm struggling with this one as well and, and trying to trying to make a case for it, determining you know, the, the gravel that's around the area, the impervious surface, and so on. Um, however, the point stated correct. It's easy to swap out those windows, and you do have access to the backyard through the side of the house, and you can still walk around. It's not like you're cut off in the backyard from that access. Um, and I understand from looking at all the other homes here, yes, there are other structures in some of these other homes there, um, but I don't have any information on those we're just looking at this home by itself. Uh, I agree with Ms. Loisel that you know, I, I don't have an issue with number three. Um, and piggybacking on Ms. Shu's co uh, comments on number four, uh, you know, due diligence is due diligence, and you know, we try as hard as we can, but it's, it's up to professionals that we hire, if it's a realtor or an inspector, or things like that, to present that information to them. Unfor it is very unfortunate in this case, but don't see a uh, positive outcome for them for this, unfortunately. I, I have many issues on this. Uh, we're, we're seeing a trend, and I don't know where the trend is coming from, but I believe the board can probably attest to this. This is probably the fourth or fifth appeal we've had in the last five months that is coming before us because the realtor didn't help people understand what could be done or what couldn't be done or why that deck was there. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm kind of frustrated with that from the real estate perspective because it's a big purchase. And I'm not doubting the real estate professional by any means, but this is literally the fourth or fifth one that that's been what's being addressed to us is that they just didn't know. And when you're purchasing a property like this, you have to know. I mean, you, you can see something was there. you got to ask the question as to why and get your professional to look into it and find out. They would have been able to find out that it was denied once before. I mean, Mr. Longstaff's both of his letters, I mean, both of these things are pretty forthright in saying, you can't get it. I mean, even the surface that's there should be removed. And the prior owner obviously created this situation when they did it illegally. They put the doors on illegally, they put the service illegally, they put the deck illegally, yeah, they removed it, but I don't see the board coming back and saying, okay, because the owner said it was okay, he went and did what he was told to do by the code enforcement office, we're going to let them put back something that was illegal in the first place. I, I don't see that. I don't see, um, I don't see the meeting, like Mr. Longstaff, I mean, Mr. Longstaff said, I don't see C meeting. It's pretty basic down there. A lot of houses share the same characteristics. I don't see, I mean, B, possibly. I think if you can get the return, you wouldn't have bought it if you couldn't get the return. So, I mean, there's, there's alternative ways. I, I sympathize with them for not having a deck, but I don't see any way that this can be approved by anybody. I'm seeing a consensus of that. I mean, I'd like to get your comments on this too, just so you can put some comments on the record for findings of fact. And, and help us out on some of this and let us know a realtor's perspective on it if you could. So my my biggest question that was going through my mind as we were listening to all the facts on this was at what point was it discovered that this deck was put on illegally? And at what point was it determined that it needed to be removed? And uh, it appears from what Mr. Longstaff has said that in 2005 there was a letter that's in the file stating that that was when the deck was ordered to be removed. And that was in the property file in a matter of public records. So regardless of whether there was representation by a realtor or whether it was just the own, uh, you know, prospective buyer's due diligence period that they should have investigated this, um, the information was readily available as they were making their decision to purchase. 
And to come back at this point and think that a new um, a new decision should be made in that I think is is maybe overly optimistic in their in their um, I would say that you know their recourse really is not with this board. It would be with the prior owner who <coughs> suggested that they could do this, or it might be with you know a representative that or a, uh, an agent that represented them. Um, but in either way, they had the opportunity, I believe, to to discover this information prior to making the purchase, prior to deciding the price of their offer, and prior to determining the value of that home. And so my problem with this would be that I think they had all the, all the information they needed and should not be expecting that this be, uh, that this be changed. Uh, I was on the zoning board when this first came up back in 2005. different circumstance because somebody did something illegal. Mr. Domingo is not trying to do something illegal. He's just trying to do something that he was told he could do. Um, but that doesn't that doesn't allow him to do something that the law says that he can't do regardless of whether he was honest or dishonest. We turned it down the first time back in 2005, primarily because it was too close. It wasn't, we didn't, we didn't turn it down because we wanted to get the guy in trouble or anything like that. He just did something illegal. He did something without approval. I can't. Uh, I can't support any of this. It doesn't really have any effect on this thing. But one, two, and four definitely. You know, there's no. There's no hardship there. Um, one thing I'd like to ask Brian. Brian, is there a possibility of putting a patio? Or is that more of the impervious 